Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. I did adjust my mic a bit, so let me know if this is any better or if this sounds good, too loud, too quiet, whatever. But all that being said, let's jump into it. Tesla is going to be down 4.4%. Also, there might be some construction noise. Apologies for that. It comes and goes, but let's just try to focus on this for now. Regardless, Tesla being down 4.4%, putting it at about $153.64. So let's discuss what happened, what we can expect moving forward, and all of that good stuff. So pretty much essentially what happened was the fact that what we talked about yesterday unfortunately tried to play out but as you can see it clearly went the bearish way usually these patterns again like i said in, in the market in stocks and you know ta nothing is guaranteed it's just probabilities the probability of this was to actually in my opinion still rally upwards and at least get some kind of rally maybe back to like 170 ish uh, unfortunately that's not the case it seems like because we did actually fall through right here as you can see right through this came back up retested it and pretty much ended at almost the lows of the day which isn't great the bearish or sorry the bullish divergence on the RSI is still technically intact, though it's looking so you know not as beautiful as it did before, at least yesterday, after today's drop. So that stuff is not looking good. So it, the short term, even even the short term, is looking a little bit suspicious. But I will give you guys an uh, alternate perspective that may shift the momentum. I guess we'll we'll, we'll discuss that, but. I also want to take a quick look on the daily before we move forward. You can see, you know, again moving down to this area and potentially even as low as you know this 145-ish level. Should be no surprise, right? The only surprise might be just how fast it happened, as usually it is with Tesla, right? Tesla sometimes sometimes takes a long time to really do anything. Sometimes when it finally does something, it happens, just got a snap of a finger. It just does it, whether it's up or down, right? And so that's kind of essentially, in my opinion, what we're seeing right now. It's just getting pretty much punished ever since it was all the way here at 207. It's getting pretty, you know, aggressively punished for a uh, you know, pretty decent, decently fast amount of time, especially when the market was actually green for at least QQ, SPY was a force down, so Tesla definitely underperforming. But again, shouldn't be surprised that we are coming down to this overall level. And again, I personally still think there's a bit more room to the downside, though not that much, only about maybe another five or so percent, maybe slightly more, but give or take 5%. But the reason I bring this up is also the RSI on the daily is still looking pretty bearish. It is entering oversold territory ever so slightly. So that's, you know, technically a good sign because, you know, things don't stay oversold for too long. But as you can see here, we did get oversold. This is back when Elon was selling. We did go to oversold territory and actually went exceptionally low. This is like pretty rare to go this low, but we did stay this low for quite a while, right? We didn't just completely bounce out, out of the oversold zone for, uh, you know, or instantly. On top of that, there is absolutely zero bullish divergences setting up on the daily as well as you can see as the stock is going down so is our RSI no bullish divergences so for that kind of short to medium transition time frame if you will period still looking overall net bearish and there's no signs of a true bounce yet the only potential bounces that might be happening if there are any of course during this downturn are in my opinion very temporary and that's essentially what we have always discussed right however in my opinion we are approaching what could be the potential bottom for tesla which again should be around this gap bill and that to me will be extremely crucial to see what happens and how tesla reacts to it today's volume also is you know not ridiculously high but you know pretty overall respectable ish volume so nothing to completely laugh about right definitely a pretty powerful move today as well you know, especially considering the overall market wasn't doing too bad. Like Microsoft reported earnings up a good amount, right? So uh, Bed Bath & Beyond down 41%. That is just unbelievable. Um, but yeah, so those are the kind of like the overall general perspective of what I am currently uh, seeing with Tesla, right? So it, it is unfortunate that it didn't play out the way, you know, it sh in, my, in my opinion, it should have. But, you know, if you look at, for instance, TSLQ, you can see it is still rallying upwards. It is technically still setting a bull or bearish divergence, though also with like with Tesla, it's not as... It's not as clean of a pattern being set anymore after today's movement, in my opinion. It is still technically a bearish divergence here on the TSLQ, but again, not that clean. But we talked about before, we talked about how the second it breaks out of this, as it was hugging it, we talked about how, you know, the second this happens, it is going to most likely get a rally, a little bit more aggressive of a rally than I thought. I did think that these candles right here were probably the at least top for now. Get a bit of a drawdown and then continue up. Instead, we're going straight up right away while Tesla is going essentially straight down. So we'll see what that actually comes into fruition. I will look to, I actually sold a cash secured put uh, this morning ish on this large candle down here. And as it came down, I did ended up buying it back uh, as from what I expected as being a retest here. So I did sell two cash secured puts here, bought them back up here. Not a huge play, but it was looking about like a 15, 
maybe 20%, about 15% of a play, but for a day trade-ish, uh, that's not too shabby. And then I did not sell another one yet because I do want to see how tomorrow opens up, but I most likely will resell those cash secured puts probably tomorrow for May 19th is my current strategy. And I'm looking to personally, throughout the month of May, really looking to uh, accumulate Tesla shares, especially down around this level and especially around the 140s. That is my overall game plan right now. But again, that's, not, that's just my opinion. It's not financial advice. None of, the, none of this stuff in this video is financial advice. Make your own decisions, do your own research. This is just entertainment. And if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. I forgot to say that. The VIX, on top of this, you know, it's definitely finding some issues. We talked about yesterday how the VIX is most likely going to be finding a little bit of a resistance over here closer to the 20s. And that's exactly what is happening. Unfortunately, the market itself, other than a certain, you know, things like, you know, Microsoft that is just rallying, AMD, NVIDIA up like two and a half to three percent for whatever reason. You know, other than those things right there, you know, the fact that the VIX is not really doing a whole lot compared to the market is a little bit strange because again spy uh you know is down the market is kind of half down half up and then the vix is kind of in this weird limbo land in the 19 region so i still personally expect the vix to most likely make its way potentially as low as even 17 almost 18 i would say and then rallying because i personally still believe that the market most likely should in theory have one more rally up for a retest like this that we talked about yesterday Again, the question is, when does that actually happen? You can always do a retracement level. So for instance, you know, you can potentially go from the bottom here all the way to the top here and get a decent idea. So potentially maybe it will go back down to closer to 400 on SPY and maybe there we'll get a bit of a rally, right? That is a possibility. So we'll have to keep an eye out on that. But with Tesla, going over to the one hour. So I did talk about uh, an alternate perspective that Tesla can have that might make it seem a little bit more bullish, I guess, right? So for instance, if you go on like a slightly longer time frame, let's do three hour for instance. Well, then again, I was looking at it in the middle of the day. It's looking a little bit less good now, I guess, mainly because it closed pretty much at the low of the day, which isn't what you want to be seeing. Yeah, never mind. So unfortunately, it wasn't the case because I, I was looking at it thinking that, you know, when it was this candle right here, uh, when this candle was happening is, is when I was looking at it and it came back into the, you know, potential little wedge, if you will, here, descending wedge. I was thinking that maybe this could have been a false breakout, right? But unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. And it's hard to, I'm honestly trying to find a way to make this look bullish, but it's just, yeah, it's not looking bullish, guys. I'll, I'll be honest. It really did break down south of this little uh, situation here, right? Could It could have been bullish here. It actually could have had a false breakdown, could have came back in and reversed and actually been a pretty nice rally, in my opinion, tomorrow. Unfortunately... That doesn't seem to be the case. Facebook is actually reporting positive earnings as well, up 7.4%, which is great to see as well for Facebook. So maybe we'll get some momentum there, but clearly, you know, even with Microsoft's fantastic beat, uh, it really didn't do anything for Tesla today, clearly. So I don't know what happened to today with Tesla. I don't know why it's falling this aggressively. Something must have happened, some news or something, maybe just a straight technical play, hard to say for sure. But all we know from this is the fact that it did actually fail this breakout. So that is not a good sign right now. So if it can somehow recover and re-enter this area tomorrow, that will be good. But if it can't and it comes back and retests one more time, that's gonna be bad. Or the other option is it pretty much just goes straight down from here and finally enters potentially what looks to be one more very small level of support. So if you kind of go back over here, you can see, right? We are essentially, so the blue line right here is of course going to be post market, right? The red line over here, the dotted one is pretty much what it closed at. You can see we are entering some pretty final level areas of support here, right? So right where we are literally right now is one level. You can see a bunch of little, you know, wicks up here where it had resistance before, which of course usually turns into support. And of course, we also have down here around pretty much the 150 mark is another level as well. So those are the main levels I'd be paying, paying attention to as a potential actual bounce level. Probably 150 is what I would expect, but you know, here's not a horrible spot either. But honestly, 150s is what I would personally expect for it to fall. Maybe, maybe even tomorrow wouldn't be a massive fall from here, right? Again, if we open up more or less where we close, we'd fall down another only two percent roughly for an actual potential bounce, right? So we'll see if that actually comes to fruition. But I don't expect there to be too much more downside for Tesla, at least for now before at least some sort of a bounce, whatever that bounce may be. And again, in my opinion, the worst case scenario before a true bounce would be this gap fill sitting around this 145-ish level. So overall, in my opinion, there is still definitely more downturn on the left. I really wanna see it hold around this gap fill, which is 145. We talked about this several times as to why that is, but if we do this like this right here, you can see, right? That is of course the Fibonacci 618 retracement off of this. And this is assuming that like we talked about before the bullish 
like thesis, if you will, is intact because it did set a higher high on this rally here to about this 214-ish level. So hopefully that holds, hopefully that's good, and hopefully that's the play. And then from here, if it comes down again to this level of 145 and holds, this to me would be a very bullish bounce, very bullish level to come down to and hold and bounce from. And that to me would also mean that we're going for a higher levels over here uh, past this 200 to 215 ish level which would be fantastic news at the moment there's no actual signs in the daily of a reversal there's nothing really too bullish even short term in all honesty so i expect that potentially a little bit more pain but i do also expect that uh we're pretty damn close to getting a bounce so uh, again only a little bit more percentages down but potentially before we actually get a true final bounce so We'll see what happens. We'll see if we actually get that. The final thing we'll look at very quickly is, of course, the 21 email. We're well below that. The Bollinger Band barely keeping up with us. So remember we talked about how it's getting tight, and usually when it gets this tight, it doesn't stay tight this long, and it has an explosive move. Well, clearly earnings was the catalyst, so we were correct about that. And now this move, of course, is you know pretty much just taking shape, right? It's just doing its thing, essentially. 100-day moving averages uh, above us. The 50 day moving average is above us. The five moving day moving average is above us. The 50 is above us. So it's overall looking still quite net to bearish and there's nothing really bullish about it just yet. Um, until we find one, I will let you guys know. But again, just looking at strict support and resistance, I think the main level next is 150. And after that, it it is going to be around this 145-ish level, which is the gap fill. So that's what I'm seeing. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.